The lighting of the traditional nanipak brings together ancient elements, iyagat and ivruk from the earth, ukruk from the sea that meant survival for Arctic people. The siloy lamp symbolizes the rekindling of the Northwest Native trade fair at Sisolik and Tetekdavu. People made connections and exchanges needed to survive. They gathered food, traded goods, and conducted diplomacy. They also competed in traditional games, feasted, told stories, and danced. A long time ago, uh, the way his grandfathers told him, the people used to come over from over there and trade with the people here and then go home. They saw the Eskimo dance, and they thought it was very strong. Funding is provided by the Kotzebue IRA Council and the Shared Beringian Heritage Program of the National Park Service. In July of 1996, people gathered in Kotzebue from Chukotka, St. Lawrence Island, in Northwest Alaska to the modern celebration of the Northwest Native Trade Fair. They came to renew many connections among different peoples and across different generations and traditions. Dances retold traditional stories about people's living experiences. And because we have a relationship with all the animals, that we depend on to survive. We do a lot of their songs. When they hear a song, they're gonna come on. Dances feature balanced movements of the head, hands, and feet. What is done to the right is also done to the left. Dancers learn the rules, movements, and meaning of each dance. Dances that stay in balance are healing. There are many songs about dancing. The one who composed this one saw Anna and Tata going to the dance and also saw his nephew all enjoying the dance. living experiences also generated new dances.
Savunga composer Jimmy Tooley, still dancing here at 92, is joined by three younger generations of Savunga dancers in his basketball dance. Dances seen today are motion dances. Sayu. Bench dances feature the arms known as salak. The aduti back are common or invitational dances. It's pretty much like going to an Eskimo church because this is where we give thanks for all our blessings, whether they're big or small. This aduti back originated as a kimmun, or personal song for the midwinter whaling ceremony, Kakamisa, where whale organs are eaten. The dance part of the ceremony is known as Uruk. The dance belonged to Kataliro, the last shaman of Point Hope. It heals people. They come away completely lighter, no, not heavily burdened. The abrupt ending of the song catches many dancers by surprise, which is fun for the drummers. Many kinds of dances are not seen because they are sacred ceremonies. Yes, all ceremonials, drummings, through the whole year, only on that day that they are done will you hear those songs. Just before the 1900s began, missionaries from the Friends Church preached against smoking, drinking, gambling, traditional Inupiaq spirit beliefs, and dancing. In places where the church was strongest, the dancing stopped. A revival of traditions began in the late 1970s when elders gathered in Kotzebue. And we thought it was such a good idea to revive the trade fair. And when the dancing began, the elders who hadn't danced for many years joined in the dance. Several decades ago, Paul Green wrote a song teasing the Friends Church for not allowing the dance. Now that dancing has been widely revived, his granddaughters have made the song their own, emphasizing being happy to dance. Another surprise came from Chakapka, 
where traditional contact had been cut off by the Cold War. In 1980, Rachel Craig took Kotzebue dancers to the Inuit Circumpolar Conference in Greenland. And while we were singing and drumming on stage, the Russians behind us, behind the curtain, were singing our songs with us. And, and pretty soon, I, when we were through, they came on and they sang some of our old songs. And I asked them how, how did they learn our songs? Or, or did we get it from them? Or, or, or how did, how was there an exchange of these songs? Uh, it was quite exciting. He said, he said a long time ago, uh, the way his grandfathers told him, the people used to come over from over there and trade with the people here and then go home. They saw the Eskimo dance, and they thought it was very strong. So they learned the songs, and they learned the dances, and then when they went home, they demonstrated these dances to, th to their people over there. And he said, that's why we sing your old song. Songs and dances were also part of the trading tradition. Composers taught songs and movements to travelers who took the songs to other people and places known as exchange songs. Removing the parka hood at the end of the dance is a gesture of good intentions or peace. The ancient sign of the open hand is also peaceful, showing there is no weapon. Younger boys in Kotzebue connect with the important tradition of hunting ugruks that provided food, storage, heat, and skins that helped Inupak peoples survive. This old song from Point Hope is from the time that black powder muskets first arrived. The hunter goes out on the ice, looks, shoots, checks to see if it was killed, then gets a hook and pulls it in. He is surprised to find it is a walrus instead of an ugruk. He was so strong and so excited that he pulled it from the water by himself, something normally done by two or three men. Then he returns to the village for celebration, showing his hunting strength. At the end of the dance, he rolls up his sleeves to show his muscles.
This universal dance shows a sled full with supplies. As you travel, you protect your eyes from the sun, wind, and snow. As you arrive at your destination, people gather inside the Kargi for celebration. The dance is known from Southwest Alaska to Chukotka, the Northwest Alaska, and into Canada. The last evening of the trade fair, the dancers moved out of the school gym into a constantly moving dance competition. Looks like we're going to get started here. All the drums are here. We're here to celebrate tonight. Hello, everybody. Are you having a good time? Each group is going to get one motion dance after the Northern Lights dancers has finished maybe even before they stop uh, uh, sit down.
Somebody, somebody start drumming. Next one, when you're finished, somebody else start right away. So we keep going and going and going all night. Timothy Galagran composed Beringland Bridge because of the strong connections between St. Lawrence Island and Chukotka. Dances were shared among many people. They'd like to do teku, thanking you all for coming here, and then goodbye.
people from Chukotka to St. Lawrence Island to Northwest Alaska joined the final common dance. The elders and the young and everyone in between had the opportunity to share dances that reflect ancient traditions and recent history, connecting the peoples of the Arctic. It was time to say goodbye until the next time. Just like the midnight sun climbs in the sky again, the dancing will continue in other places in the next trade fair. Dance along with trade, athletic competitions, feasts, and a meeting of many peoples helped renew a vital part of trade fair tradition. <laughs> Funding is provided by the Kotzebue IRA Council and the Shared Beringian Heritage Program of the National Park Service. <laughs>